Number one supplement for MS. The number one supplement for MS is what? You wouldn't be able to guess this. Probiotics. <laughs> guess what the hell? How the heck probiotics is number one? The number one supplement when you're dealing with MS is probiotics. Now, why would you say it's probiotics? Why would you think it's probiotics? I'm going to tell you why it's probiotics. The immune system, 70% of your immune system is in the gut. 70% of your, 78% of your immune system is surrounding your gut, right? Your probiotics have a direct communication with that. The bacteria in your gut literally communicates with your white blood cells. They communicate. Okay. What they found, there's two species of probiotics in your gut that definitely has an effect on the immune system. Lactobacilli uh, and, and bifidobacteria. Lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. They found that these bacteria have a direct communication effect with your immune system. These bacteria, when they are out of order, when they're out of whack, your immune system does not respond the same. When you consume more probiotics and you get more lactobacilli in there, as well as bifido, it has been shown to tell the immune system to calm down. It downward regulates the immune system. Everybody talks about, I want my immune system high. I want my immune system strong and fast and high. I need my immune system boosted. No. You want your immune system regulated. You want your immune system regulated. Because what happens when it's too high and too boosted, it wants to fight. And it will start fighting you. Okay? You will never want a dog to be too aggressive. You want him to be aggressive when it's time. You don't want him to be aggressive all the time because he might bite you. The same way with your immune system. And probiotics have been shown in clinical studies to tell the immune system to calm down. It regulates the immunity. It says, hey, he's not a problem. Leave him alone. He's not a problem. Chill out. That nerve ending is not a problem. Chill out. Now, do they know exactly how it does that? No, they're still studying that. But probiotics have been shown to tell the immune system to calm down. Okay? Number two. So we got probiotics, number one supplement. Number two. We already did a whole podcast on this. Can you guess what it is? It's a part of the alphabet. Vitamin D. <laughs> vitamin D. Once again, vitamin D rears its head. Vitamin D. Now, in all the studies, they found that people... And wait, wait, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. When we read about multiple sclerosis, the areas in which they were more likely to have multiple sclerosis was where? Northern Europe, Canada, North America, uh, northern eastern part of Australia, and New Zealand. Most of those places are furthest away from the equator. They didn't say southern America, Southern North America, they didn't say that. They said Northern America, like the Northern States and Canada, Northern Europe, not Southern Europe. The places that's closest to the equator have the less chances of having a, 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 a MS because vitamin D is directly related to, to MS. They found that people who are the lowest in vitamin D have a greater chance of having MS. Vitamin D is vital to keeping MS under control. Mm. Vitamin D is vital because we talked about this. Vitamin D is an anti-inflammatory vitamin. It's an anti-inflammatory vitamin. Vitamin D is extremely important. People who have lower amounts of vitamin D have greater symptoms, and the severity of the symptoms are higher. That means if you have MS, and your vitamin D levels are good, you have a reduction in severity of symptoms. People who are vitamin D levels are low, their symptoms are greater. They're having problems with walking. 
the nerve that trembles. Everything is worse when somebody is low in vitamin D. So taking four to 5,000 IUs of vitamin D a day can help you reduce the overall symptoms that comes with MS. Number three, omega-3s. Oh, oh, how many times we got to talk about omega-3s? Why is that? Because it's essential. And we already talked about omega-3s a thousand times on why it's essential. Omega-3s reduce inflammation in the body. They do so much. But omega-3s put, literally protect your nerve endings. It protects the brain. Where is your body absorbing most of the omega-3s? When a baby is being formed, when a baby is being formed, they tell a mother to take what? DHA. You take folic acid and what? DHA. DHA does what for the baby? It, it helps with the formation of the brain and the nervous system. DHA is a, is a part of omega-3. It's a part of it. Remember, omega-3 is a triglyceride. Is a triglyceride, where it has EPA, DHA, and AA, I think it's arcanins. I forgot the other one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that for you all. But it's a triglyceride, okay? It's a triglyceride. So your brain and your nervous system sucks up uh, omega-3s. It loves them. It's extremely important. It helps actually create myelin sheet. It's a neuroprotector. Omega-3 is a neuroprotector, as well as omega-3 is the fireman that turn off inflammation. Remember we talked about that? Omega-6 does what? Turn it on. Omega-3 what? Turns it off. And we already said the one thing you can do when it comes down to dealing with MS is to keep inflammation down. And omega-3, just that key, turns it off. So consuming anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams of omega-3 Helps with that. Number four, systemic enzymes. Now, you're going to say, what the heck is that, Abdul? What is systemic enzymes? So most people think of enzymes, you know, enzymes are basically every mechanism or every chemical reaction, everything in our body reacts by enzymes. There's going, it's like tens of thousands of types of enzymes in our body. Enzymes, systemic enzymes are enzymes that work in the bloodstream, okay? There's a few products out there like Wobenzyme, like serapeptase, like natokinase, like bromelain. These are enzymes that work in the bloodstream. Now, now, not all systemic enzymes will help, but systemic enzymes, what they do is the same way digestive enzymes digest proteins, fats, and carbohydrates in our stomach, and in our intestines and make them smaller for our body can absorb it, when you take systemic enzyme supplements, they work in the bloodstream. Now think of your body. Remember, your immune system is attacking the myelin sheath of your nervous, your nerves, right? Well, those things that attack, the bullets that the enzyme, I mean, the, the body shoots at the myelin sheath is called immunoglobin. Right? That's what they call immunoglobulins. They attack them, the, the, the nervous system, and they start breaking it down. Well, digestive enzymes, immunoglobulins are proteins. Well, systemic enzymes are going to digest those proteins in the bloodstream. So as your body is shooting, blah, 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 these systemic enzymes are like Pac-Man. They're saying, oh, that's food. Yum, yum, yum. Chopping them down, eating the immunoglobulins. The excessive immune guard that's attacking the myelin sheet of the immune, I mean, of the body. So systemic enzymes help with inflammation. They break down those rogue immunoglobulins that are attacking the myelin sheet. So those are extremely important to take. So there are systemic enzymes out there. Wobenzyme is one. It's a very, very popular one. It's been around like 60, 70 years. It's been around forever. It was actually a prescription in Germany when it first was created. Okay? You got serapeptase is another one. You got bromelain. You could do uh, um, papain. Um, that comes from pineapple. You can actually take digestive enzymes on an empty stomach, and your body would absorb them, and it can act as systemic enzymes too. Okay? So 
you have a lot of enzymes that you could take on an empty stomach and your body will absorb them and they get used in the bloodstream. They clean enzymes clean up a lot of stuff. Okay? So stomach enzyme. Number four. Now you probably heard of this R lipoic acid. Not alpha, I didn't say alpha. Even though alpha helps, R lipoic acid is more effective. R lipoic acid is more effective. About 300 milligrams a day, and you could do up to 600, right? R lipoic acid is an antioxidant that's specially designed to go inside the nerve endings. Oh, it's beautiful. It could go into the blood-brain barrier. It's very protective of the nervous system. It's a powerful antioxidant that produces, help the body produce more glutathione in the cell. Glutathione, we already talked about, is the most powerful antioxidant that our body produces. It reduces inflammation. Our lipoic acid is extremely effective. It protects the nervous system. Our lipoic acid. Now, we talked about this a thousand times, and I've got to keep going over this. Number six is going to be curcumin, and I'm going to say with ginger, turmeric and ginger. But I like curcumin by itself. I like curcumin better than turmeric because curcumin is the active ingredient found in there. We already know that it reduces inflammation. We already know that it helps with joint pain. We already know that it protects the uh, brain. We already know it protects the nervous and uh, nerve endings. We already know that curcumin also helps, re, uh, helps keep cholesterol off the arteries. We know all these things about curcumin, but it's extremely effective in the use of MS. Ginger also is another great one that protects the nerve endings. It keeps the inflammation down. And number seven is acetyl-L-carnitine. Acetyl-L-carnitine. Acetyl-L-carnitine is a powerful brain food. Okay, it improves your memory, it improves your mood, it improves your learning, it lowers your inflammation of your cells, it boosts circulation, it helps improve your workouts. Acetyl L carnitine it helps improve your memory. It's a brain food. It's a brain nutrient. Very, very, very effective for helping you deal with your MS. Why is that? Anything that's going to help your nervous system and your brain is going to have a beneficial effect on MS. Now, the first couple of things actually have an effect on the immune system itself. The other nutrients I talked about, more of a protective barrier for your nervous system and your brain. Now, we can also talk about phosphatidylserine. We can talk about a few other things, too, out there. Uh, uh, what else you got? DMEA, DMEA. That's another protective for the brain. But I just kept it simple with seven supplements. So we said probiotics is number one you should be taking. Vitamin D is essential, number two. Omega 3s, number three. Arlipoic acid, number four. Curcumin and ginger, I like that, number five. Oh, systemic enzymes, number six. And then acetyl L carnitine. Number seven.